Welcome to the Meditation Realm Planeswalkers. I'm Caleb, your guide to these blind eternities. And in today's video, we got ourselves a set booster from Ixalan. Got to see if we get lucky with these Lost Caverns. Pull ourselves some Mythics and some other sweet cards. Maybe we can get ourselves a nice Mana Crypt in that special frame. Uh, you know, so many of those other good cards. This set definitely has a lot to be able to play for Commander. All those gods are very good. All the lands are playable. Uh, definitely some goodies. And then the list slot has some added newbies to be able to get some. But to start off, we're going to see what we get with our Treasure Trove box topper here. Uh, I believe Set Booster, you get non-foil. And it was the collector that was foil. Well, let's see what we get. Sometimes these things are a pain to open. Those are going to be the easiest up here. All right. Drum roll. <laughs> Warren Power Stone. <laughs> Sweet card. Definitely a, a commander playable. Uh, stable, if even. But uh, definitely not a value one. So womp womp. Throw in that sad trombone. But let's see if we can get lucky with our other stuff here. Uh, definitely a lot of cards that are playable for the format. Uh, Standards definitely got some new powerhouses. Hey, we got a Mythic to start off with. We got Miri, the Weatherlight Duelist. This is the special guest version. Uh, we got a few of these cards that are special guests that are coming in the set boosters, so it makes an interesting a, a, a appearance so for some new cards. So first Mythic, Foil Uncommon. Hey, second Mythic, we got Chimley, the Inner Sun, starting off pretty strong here. And then we got that land here. Yes, all of the uh, Jurassic Park lands are have their before and after. Like, before the park uh, got loose, and then after the dinosaurs got loose. Interesting. I thought it was a unique style to do with the lands. But, uh, again, they're not my favorite art style for this set. Uh, we've had so many special lands that some of these are just kind of meh. Well, let's see. First pack, we had two Mythics. Hey, that's a good pack to start off with. Uh, definitely helps somewhat make up for our poor worn power stone for our box topper. But, uh, hey, you know, when they've got uncommon box toppers, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Alright, so we've got our token in the front here. Felt a little off. we got a foil rare, a poetic ingenuity. This card did work against me in the pre-release. I had an opponent who played that against me on, like, turn three, and it was just so rough to get through that game. Uh, braided net for our next rare. And then I believe it's just commons and uncommons at this. All right. Through all the commons and uncommons. Um, definitely interested to see how this is going to shake up uh, the standard environment, if at all. Pioneer would be nice to see a little bit of shake up. I know they're not banning anything really too often anymore. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how formats change, especially because with the new change in standard and being longer environment. And, you know, standard just not being a thing for the longest time. Hey, we got ourselves a myth, another mythic. We have the god, the red god, O'Hare Axonal, Deepest Might. Probably the best red burn commander they've ever printed. Uh, super strong. And, again, just the fact that all these guys turn into lands and you can flip them back. And, oh, they're going to see so much play. We have Bringer of the Last Gift. Gosh, the art on this is just so beautiful. Sweet looking art. I could definitely see this as a play map. Uh, board wipe, reanimate. Uh, living living death on a six sick body. Not bad. Definitely can do some work. The most pre-ordered card on TCG to pre-release was Bartolome de Presidio. He is going to be your new capitan. Uh... He's going to be one of those aristocrat guys that are going to do a lot of work. And all right, that's all our commons and uncommons. Some caves. All right, on to the next pack here. Uh, there was definitely a cave theme in this set. I can't recall if there was too many cards that were, like, overly powerful that cared about caves or, like, synergized enough for it to be a thing. But maybe in upcoming, upcoming sets it'll be, uh, be more of a thing. All right, list uncommon, foil uncommon. We got a rare, the belligerent, and uncommons. All right, all uncommons. All right, only one in that pack. Um, 
definitely you know with the set boosters it's uh kind of nice to be able to get that extra rares and you're not always going to get more than one rare but sometimes you can with the new play boosters it's going to be interesting to see how lucky we get with those let's see we got a deep root pilgrimage for a rare and foil and then a masalanti rare and then our commons and uncommons all right on to the next pack with Ixalan, it was definitely a fun set to play in. If you got to play in the pre-release, let me know down in the comments what you got to play or what you got played against that you had a lot of fun with. This set has a lot of uh, value as far as playable commander stuff. Uh, what's going to actually maintain monetary value is going to be yet to be seen. Obviously, Cabin of Souls will... You know, be in that 20-ish dollar range, but it's not going to be a $50 Mythic. It's just losing value already. Uh, I think it's only 25 at the moment for Cavern of Souls, and that's the most expensive. As far as, like, non-special cards, unless the White God has gone up in price more. Alright. Sometimes it's hard to figure out where we're at with these packs. we got a Belligerent Yearling in its foil. This guy is going to do work in uh, Standard, I think. This into that 6-6 dinosaur um, that, you know, if you attack, it puts a stun counter on. If you don't have another dinosaur, this just swings for 6 on turn 3. And then you've got a 6-6 six, six body they have to deal with as well. I think red-green dinos will be a thing. Uh, I don't think he'll be a, th a thing in the red-green dinos, but there's a red dinosaur rare for us. And then commons, no commons. All right, only one rare in that one again. Another cave here. All right. So three mythics so far out of this box. Um... Uh, as it's kind of been with these sets with how many versions of cards we get uh, to quote the professor buying singles is generally your best bet if you're looking for specific cards got a reprint here growing rights of itlamok definitely belongs on this plane good card uh but yes definitely hard to necessarily make your quote quote money back um with new play boosters i'm curious to see how different that'll be and if we're going to have a lot more of these box openings with play boosters so we got a land the restless reef and then we got anim pakal the thousandth moon uh interesting art style i like it almost hard to tell that it's a rare off the bat but sweet card scythe claw raptor that art style is pretty sweet very colorful Kind of hoping I can get, a, I think it's Quintorius in his special art style. That Mesoamerican look, the Tess Aztecian look, just looks so beautiful. I would love to pick up most of the cards in that like big art style, original art. We got a Kite Sail Larcenist for the rare in this pack. And that's it, just an Arsonist. Man, don't arson my rares here, guys. We started off strong with three Mythics, and now we're petering out here but we still got more than half a box hopefully we can kind of make it up here um this seems to be kind of the common uh common rate with the standard sets nowadays is that it's kind of hard to really kind of hard to really make a bunch of big hits you know there's some special versions of cards but because that are worth some money but because there are so many versions of every card you know every it seems like every set now we have two to five versions of every card that even the powerful cards just aren't holding any value. I got an unstable glyph bridge. This card did work in uh, the limited environment. It's a board wipe that flips into a creature uh, that makes it harder to deal with, uh, harder to attack you, play spells. Yeah, uh, playable and limited for sure. Uh, probably going to see playing commander as well. And that's our rare for this pack. All right, on to the next. What we can get here, we got a signed art card by Charo. Sweet art. Who is it? Curator of Sun's Creation. Uh, I don't recall what the card does. Probably a common. It's amazing some of the beautiful art that we get on cards, and they're common. Hey, we got another mythic here. We got Sahili, the Sun's Brilliant. 2-2 two, two for 2, blue and a red, creative token, that's a copy of another target creature or artifact you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types, it gains haste, sack at the beginning of the next instant. Oh hey, nice! Uh, this could definitely be very strong in Commander. I can see this seeing a lot of play. You know, sweet. Be a strong Commander itself.
making choking clones all day long. Ah, uh, sweet. I'm going to have to turn that into play somewhere. Definitely not necessarily as artifact themed as the last couple of Sahili's as well, so if you go into other decks. Ooh, pretty art here. He's definitely abusing some old school technology. It's kind of funny when, in magic terms, old school definitely generally relates to like technological things. Kind of like a lot of fan fantasy. It's like somehow the past had the better, better artifacts. Throne of the Grim Captain for our other rare here after the intrepid, ha God, paleontologist. Yeah, I can read. Intrepid paleontologist. Our mana dork that can do some extra stuff. And then we got Throne of the Grim Crap Captain. Another rare. And then commons and uncommons. Alright. Uh, beyond Ixalon, I think our next set coming out is Ravnica. Definitely looking forward to cracking that open. You know, they've kind of shown off the art already for the, the shock lands. But, you know, we're going to see some other stuff. Hey, we got a Mythic. It's a terrible Planeswalker. It's Oko the Trickster, the 6-drop one. Uh, this was from the Eldraine decks? Yeah. These were from the Eldraine uh, Commander decks or intro decks. Terrible version of Oko. Terrible. Absolutely. And then we got a, uh, an Uncommon. Boo. Swashbuckler's Whip. Tap target artifact or creature and eight discover ten. Interesting. That's a that's a lot just to be able to discover ten. We got the hulking raptor. This guy has seen a lot of talk as far as being like the the ramp card of the constructed formats uh, for standard and pioneer potentially. You play this turn three and then uh, being hard to deal with war two. You just start adding mana on your pre-combat main phases going forward and you just get so far ahead quickly. I can definitely see some play. It did work in the limited environment when I saw see play. Uh, it's a big body that comes down early and then ramps you into other big bodies. But you know, the state of the game has just been a it's been an interesting one to watch as well. Uh, the amount of people that I've seen that are buying large amounts of booster boxes have definitely dwindled. A lot more people are switching over to buying the singles. Uh, I myself have not been buying as many boxes that have been coming out. Um, there are so many versions of cards that, while it's sweet to play with, it's definitely not a whole lot of return on investment. There's only one rare in that one. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know, it used to be kind of that you know the foil multiplier actually mattered. You know, the special versions of card mattered. The full art land mattered, and kind of none of those things really matter. It's usually like three cards that kind of matter. We have the Myco Tyrant here, a mythic. The Elder Fungus, I believe he's the villain of the story, or one of the villains of the story. Uh, and that's it, no more mythics. Um, but it's definitely kind of hard. I definitely see how shops have been struggling to make it especially when you know amazon can dump stuff early that was a huge hilarious thing if you didn't see or read about that the amazon dumping ravnica boosters before they had even come out at a discounted price the foil bartolome del presidio we got an ever flowing realm well for a rare um but yeah the fact that you know wizards is doing stuff like that already we just keep getting so many so much product that comes out between the secret layers and the normal standard sets, the special sets, the commander sets, the uh, universes beyond. Like, I have Doctor Who that I haven't even opened yet. I'm still going to open that for the channel. I'm so far behind on that that I haven't even got to that yet. Uh, just because there's been so much. Warden of the Inner Sky for a rare... And then we got a Restless Prairie for another rare, and it's Borderless Frame. Nice. But, you know, it's so hard to justify buying multiple boxes, because unless you hit that special card, uh, you're not going to get your money. And again, you know, Wizards is kind of... It's surprising that these sets, like standard sets, how much uh, they're going for now. Like, even, you know, the standard collector boosters 
people are charging upwards of like 300 bucks for a collector booster box. And it's like, it's a standard collector booster box, not even a, uh, you know, special master's set or whatever, just a standard. It's like, it's crazy. It's just crazy. I mean, you guys never tell me what you think in the comments. We got a foil forest here. Nice, pretty sweet. Um, the, it almost seems like universes beyond too, like what what they're putting into it. As like you know, if you got forty k, uh, that was definitely a good investment. Um, I kind of question the Lord of the Rings and the uh, Doctor Who because of them putting out the collector boosters and like the. Warhammer was unique in that you could only get them in the Warhammer decks. There were no other boosters to get special versions of them. Get lost for a rare here. Um, the rest of this pack's about to get lost because there ain't nothing in it. Um, yeah, just crazy. All right. Foil Amelia Benavides Aguirre. In her special art. Uh, this card's combo in with uh, an explorer. God, why am I forgetting the two drop creature's name? But it's a uh, combo in with an uncommon explorer creature from the last set to be able to pop it off to 20 below up the board and then just kill your opponent. It's going to be interesting to see if it sees much play. And then we here we got ourselves another l land, the Jurassic land, the before and after. After the dinosaurs got out and then before. But, you know, they were still getting tailed by that guy. They weren't safe. They just didn't know. And then they were gone. Oh. Uh, some interesting stuff, you know, definitely. I know a lot of people were, you know, it's kind of interesting, too, that they're doing the uh, Universes Beyond in standard sets as well. Again, this is another one where we have the, uh, the dinosaurs uh, and characters, the people from the movies from Jurassic Park. So you see a Jurassic World, you're seeing, you know, movie theater characters as, you know, magic cards. For, now I, I wouldn't say the first time, but we did have the Dungeons and Dragons characters not too long ago. And then, you know, the first uh, set of secret lair universes was the Walking Dead. Another great example of, you know, it's it's been weird where they've been going with the universes beyond. The value is kind of there, it's... Uh, you know, but at the same time, it's kind of not. It just varies from each time they put it out. I think this Doctor Who one, a lot of the cards are going to lose value just because there are collector boosters and that you can open up to get every version of the cards in foil or a special version. We got a Sunken Citadel for rare. And that's only rare in that one. But, you know, the, you can get everything else in the four commander decks. You don't even need to pick up any set boosters. To get any or collector boosters to get anything special. You have everything in your collectors. Oh, that is just beautiful. God, I left that ice to art style. What card is that? Roar of the Fifth People. Vampire Demon Token, which is pretty sweet for token. Bring her the last gift for a rare. We got another Amalia. And alright. On to our last few packs here. We got five packs left, Flames Walkers. Um after Ravnica, I'm curious to see how it goes in the Murder or Call of Manor for our next standard set uh, with the play boosters. It's definitely going to be interesting. We have Inti, Seneschal of the Sun. This guy did a lot of work in Limited. I definitely see this guy seeing play in construction environments as well. The fact that it can pump itself or another creature gives trample. Uh, it's Quotes, you stay card neutral by discarding a card and then being able to play the top card of your library. You can do that until your next end step. So it's like, yeah, definitely a playable card. I see it seeing play. All right. On to the next. Ooh, maybe we can still get lucky. There's still a chance to get some sweet mythics here. Uh, definitely nothing to write home about so far. O'Hare will be a nice inclusion in Commander decks, but... Nothing big so far. We got a Deep Root Pilgrimage for a rare. And then common and uncommon. This is another uh, uncommon commander guy that's going to do a lot of work, especially for the pirate decks. Uh, just itself, uh, whenever you make a treasure, you're just going to put counters on it. 
All right, on to the next one. Last three packs, Planeswalkers. Let's see if we can get in these. We got a Brass's Tunnel Grinder. And that's it. Grinded me away with this lack of value, Foil Swamp. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles with these sets. Uh, it's definitely harder to get a lot of value. Well, let's see. Come on. We got Inti and the Seneschal of the Sun and the Foil version. Special art. And then we got the Land, the Red Green Restless Ridgeline. The Meme Upgrade, the Earthshaker Jedma. All right. Last pack, Planeswalkers. Come on, Mana Crypt, Special Vert. And we have Uncommon Foil, Pegnosius Hammer Skull. Hey, it's going to see play. Not worth much, but it's going to see play. All right, that's everything. Thank you for joining me, Planeswalkers. Always glad to have you here. Like, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you here on the next video.